Hello, everyone. Thank you, Navris, for your introduction. Uh, yeah, um, I, I'm well pleased to be here and share with you things about EasyBI. Uh, today's topic is, uh, yeah, Navris explained a bit already, about relatively uh, new and uh, advanced uh, feature of how to write MDX formulas. Uh, with the uh, additional level of flexibility, so I hope the MDX addicts here will enjoy it very much. Uh, but uh, also, mm, I will mm, part of my presentation will also be focused on use cases. So, I think it will be interesting anyway. Uh, well, uh, uh, we have several times mentioned already our slogan about simple things that are possible and complex that simple things that are simple and complex that should be possible. Uh, and we are uh, all, the try, all the time trying uh, uh, our best to close all the gaps to make simple things simpler and complex, even more complex things possible. And uh, at some moment we noticed uh, one uh, missing uh, feature which was very much requested by customers and it was to create a, a, a writing a report wide measures like averages, cumulatives, uh, trend lines, statistics and, and so on. And what, um, yeah, uh, the challenge was that uh, report designers have several options to manipulate what we can see on the report rows. You can, can filter report uh, rows by conditions, you can remove members manually, you can bookmark members, uh, you can use dimension both in the rows and, 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 and in pages, and those all manipulations are quite hard to uh, represent in, in report-wide calculations. So I will show an examples of that. But it was still possible earlier, but uh, it led to some uh, duplication of logic in the report or um, inefficient solutions, so uh, not any more. So, uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, let me adduce, introduce me again. So, my name is Janis. Uh, I'm a kind of typic typical Latvian. I like to grow up plants. I am a practic practicing choir singer. But uh, uh, my, my performance today will be about EZBI. Uh, uh, so, um, yeah, I'm working for EZBI support for more than six years now quite an interesting uh, job to do because customers all the time are asking us more and more tricky features and all those use cases which I will present later are coming just from what customers have asked us. So I didn't invent uh, almost, <laughs> almost nothing. So, uh, well, I have previous background in, in different areas. So uh, project management, security, uh, quality management, uh, uh, but yeah, my presentation is split uh, in two parts. First, a more technical part mm, for a better understanding what tools and options MDX language provides you for working with what you see in the report. And then use cases. Uh, well, but uh, uh, first, uh, uh, one step back in history. So when we discover that users often want easier way of creating the, the report-wide calculations, we just added this feature. So uh, you probably all know that you can click on the report header, column header, and uh, add several uh, useful, useful things to your, your report, like uh, uh, statistics, some percentages, cumulatives, and so on. Uh, well, <coughs> but, uh, yeah, and it has saved us a, a, a lot of effort for supporting customers. I think it saved a lot of effort customers themselves. Um, but uh, there was a side product for this feature, and this side product was uh, uh, several uh, useful functions in MDX. So here is a short list uh, of them. Uh, I will uh, explain them in my examples. So, uh, yeah, uh, just side remark is that there are uh, several excellent books of how, uh, from where you can learn MDX. 
it is highly unlikely you will find anything about those functions in any book. It is uh, uh, easy BI-specific uh, implementation, so sources are limited. But uh, yeah, someone already mentioned today that there is always possibility to learn coding from reading the code, and uh, you can always see uh, the code in the Xcode, which is behind those uh, uh, standard calculations. You can uh, open it in edit mode, try to understand uh, uh, the functions used and syntax used, and uh, try to imagine how it can benefit for your, for your use case. Yeah, well, so yeah, uh, this part of presentation is for background and understanding what visible elements are provided uh, by your report once you design your it and to manipulate those elements. So this part will contain technical details. I will keep looking uh, time time on my notes not to miss anything important. Well, how to see visible rows? Yeah, that may, may sound a trivial question since uh, visible rows are always visible. Yeah. Uh, so uh, here is a short, uh, small report, simple report, where I just added issue type uh, to the lower level of hierarchy. And I want to use this to illustrate this visible row set. I used one of our favorite functions for debugging MDX. So if you are working with sets, you may uh, be familiar with this. And you can also print out any set. You can also print out visible rows set now. And uh, expectedly, uh, we just uh, see a list of members, the same list of members which we see in our report. So this is not a full, this might not be a full set of dimension members because visible rows set is a dynamic set which all the time adjusts to what we see in report. For instance, if I filter rows by project and apply non-empty uh, uh, switch on it, so uh, mm, I see only three related issue types for this project, and expectedly my, my visible rows set is much more compact here. Well, uh, so far, quite straightforward. Uh, but what happens with visible rows once we add several dimensions to the report rows? So, well, here comes the actual definition of what is visible rows. So, uh, it is a set of tuples. It has been mentioned already uh, what tuple is. So, here I put an uh, uh, issue type, join it with status. And uh, once, I, once I print out uh, visible rows, it is a tuple of cross-join. It is a uh, set of tuples with cross-joined members which are related to each other here. Story in progress, story to do, story in, and so on. So that's, that's uh, actually a list of tuples, set of tuples. And uh, well, one more thing to note is that it is, well, I would say it is a flat set. It has no hierarchy. Uh, regardless of uh, which level members you are using here. So here if I uh, add all statuses, status dimension at all level, it still generates the same one row in my visible rows. Uh, with, with the all status members, uh, which is equal to all other lower level status members. So that's simple object and, and we might need to keep it in mind. Well, uh, once we know how visible row set is constructed, we can uh, use several methods to work with the elements uh, from the visible, so uh, visible row set and I would like to mention some of them that I will uh, later use in my, my use cases. For, for the first is we can access elements by index. There is a current tuple function when we iterate the, uh, the set and we also very often would like to filter uh, the visible row set 
or generate another set on top of the field of the visible rows set. So uh, uh, visible row set is very much similar to a two-dimensional array. And there is an item function where you can access elements of the set or also visible row set by index. So index starts from zero and my uh, visible row set item two actually refers to the third line of my, my visible row set and it is, uh, once again, it is a tuple. So tuple of two elements, bug and, and status done. Uh, well, we can also, uh, tuple itself can be indexed. That's a bit tricky, but we can further split tuple into elements by uh, addressing each tuple element uh, with, with the index. So here, if I uh, refer to the item two, item one, it gives the status done, which is the uh, second element of the third uh, tuple in my visible row set. Well, yeah, uh, here is a function, uh, current tuple. Uh, uh, I put it on my report just for, for fun, maybe, because it just du duplicates what I have on the report rows. So it, it reproduces the tuple uh, which, is, which corresponds to each row. It, the real use case of this function is not maybe, oh, okay, I will show later. It is a use case also in report, but, but the real use case is when we iterate, when we iterate visible rows set, we can refer the current element and do some, some, uh, some uh, useful things with the current element while iterating the, the set. And perhaps the most tricky part is this, mm, uh, this filtering. filtering. It is a function several times mentioned today. So we can filter visible rows by condition. Here uh, I may wish to exclude all uh, higher level members from the status dimension. Here, because I have all statuses uh, expanded. So, and I can uh, uh, filter the visible rows set and, and have a tuples where only lower level uh, status dimension members are present. Here is the condition that status current here at member level name equals to status. Mm. Notice that it is again set of tuples. But what if we would like to see only the second level members as a set? Uh, a bit more complicated case, we need to wrap the filter within the generate function. It's not very uh, often used function. I, encourage you checking documentation, but uh, here is the, we iterate visible rows, filter status uh, level members, and then for each member generate this, this status. It gives us a set, distinct set of members uh, from all the, the mm, uh, second level dimension, lower level members. So. Well, uh, that was introduction. Uh, can try to recall it uh, from recording or something. But uh, I guess now we will switch to some use cases, uh, which, uh, as I mentioned, comes from customer requests. So, and uh, using those functions and this approach, uh, it was what made some of them much more efficient, and some of them even only way to do that. So, uh, but first is uh, simple things, yeah? Simple things first, and it didn't come from any, uh, any uh, external customer. Uh, so, uh, those who are tuning um, uh, MDX, they uh, usually struggle to remember what all are all the properties which are present 
in, in each dimension member. What was for sprint, what was for project, that, what, 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 what was all that is, what is in this, with our issues. So, and we uh, all know that we can write uh, the sprint current member all properties and, and it will give us what we want. Uh, the disappointment is that we need for each dimension uh, uh, again and again, rewrite it and rewrite it. Uh, well, uh, uh, obviously sprint, uh, sprint current member is empty for project and, uh, and we have a workaround now here uh, with a formula that does not refer to any specific dimension. It just refers to uh, whichever dimension I have in the first level, the first dimension in my report row. So uh, I take current tuple of visible rows set item zero, which refers to, to the first dimension in my, in my report, and take all properties. So uh, for you to believe, I took a couple of screenshots that it works likewise for projects and for sprints. <coughs> Uh, okay, uh, but now uh, let's switch to some maybe maybe more more interesting part. Uh, this idea of this this uh, use case is to create subtotals. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, subtotal, this is the use case when we have two or more dimensions in our report rows, and there are um, already uh, solutions for that. We can, can have um, subtotal by using uh, aggregated member or all member, um, put it on the, the, the rows and then see the, uh, the uh, uh, subtotals, uh, but one customer uh, actually didn't want to see uh, this all, all statuses there and wanted to calculate another, uh, another uh, calculations from, from the subtotals for each, uh, for each uh, issue type. So here uh, I, I put it in, in a uh, right side report uh, just to see uh, what is the subtotal for, for the story. So uh, uh, this is possible in actually two ways using the visible rows set. Uh, first is a bit uh, more natural because we can also generate, uh, as I had in my previous example, just generate uh, Assuming that we have the lower level elements our, as our second dimension, we just generate a set of, of all statuses. Well, uh, the second version is, uh, looks a bit more uh, obscure uh, because it doesn't refer to any dimension, but actually it is equivalent to what we have in the, the first uh, case. So, uh, because we can, uh, it is actually more universal because it will work whichever dimension we have in the second level. First one expects status dimension in the, in the as a second dimension. So, and uh, that generates our set of all the statuses. But if we recall Zane's presentation about context and put this set in the. Uh, uh, in our brain uh, to, to this report, we can see that only those statuses which are related to respective issue type will be counted here. So, and that uh, iteration is through all the statuses, but result is only for, for subtasks in progress and to do, giving the expected subtotal for, for, uh, for this, this issue type. Well, um, I, a bit developed this, this case a little bit further to show what, how, how it can be applied, how it can be applicable. Here is one uh, further solution of how to uh, see the uh, sub percentage of um, subtotals. So uh, here percentage in status of issues by, by uh, status uh, within this specific issue type here 
is a formula where I divide just this uh, issues created uh, value with the sum of, uh, actually with our, with my subtotal. And one more, uh, even interesting, not maybe uh, very uh, useful in this case, but to count average uh, uh, from the subtotal. So here is one more tricky formula. I not explain it currently how to count the members of second level dimension under the first level dimension member. So, and we can uh, have some sub average. Well, another use case came from a uh, customer who uh, were tracking some monthly average resolution time. Uh, uh, the customer uh, filter time by month and uh, uh, have this uh, average resolution days and expand it down to days. And probably, I, th that's my fantasy, he probably noticed, oh, oh the hell, I have this uh, disastrous day of February 7. And uh, I don't want to see my February 7 reflected in my monthly average. He uh, manually removes the uh, February 7 and uh, disappointed was because uh, average is not adjusted. Uh, 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 well, uh, it is not because it's easy to remove a member from report, but it's not so easy to remove it from hierarchy. Uh, well, uh, there is a solution now with, uh, with uh, visible rows. So to calculate the average only from what is visible. So uh, uh, if we have this month level uh, member, we can uh, sum only days and divide, uh, take total resolution days and uh, reconstruct the average as a ratio. So sum total and divide by issue count. And we, we see now, uh, significant improvement in our average resolution days uh, reflected in our report. Well, and my final use case is about statistics. It um, also comes from, from very recent request. Uh, some of my colleagues already mentioned we have a weekly uh, knowledge sharing with support colleagues. And I was preparing this this report to share to my colleagues, but uh, due to uh, the, this event, we skipped uh, last week. So uh, I, I, uh, I included it in my presentation for today, also to present it to my colleagues. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the, uh, the use case is uh, to show visually. Uh, well, one more si side note is that I, I actually I like very much statistics, uh, and I like to to, to demonstrate how how uh, easy BI can be useful for uh, visually showing some statistical insights. I have a uh, devoted topic, and you may find it on community page if you are interested. This this case is not covered there because I didn't know that before. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, show visually the timeline and show uh, uh, issues wh whose cycle time exceeds 75th percentile uh, from this period. In other words, um, if you are not familiar with this percentile concept from statistics, it shows 75% of dots are below the red line and the rest of 25% are above. So we may uh, wish to see, mm, uh, analyze what are those why those happens and, and so on, blame someone and, and so on. Uh, well, uh, the construction of this report required a bit of knowledge about chart configuration. So namely that measures on timeline can be shown also as scatter type. So here I added day level mm, time dimension members, uh, added uh, issue level because I need dot for uh, represented for each issue and switched this to, to the timeline and selected the scatter type for the, the, my cycle time for my average resolution days. So far, so good. Uh, the, the rest, uh, the, the, 
uh, what I need is to do to, to calculate the uh, percentile. There is a standard function of that in MDX. So, and I first my I, I, uh, ex my exercise was to try to write it uh, as if we couldn't have visible rows set. So, uh, and it was almost possible. So uh, uh, I need again iterate all the uh, uh, issue set, which is a very significant shortage, uh, because uh, uh, that that means uh, for each cell in issues, I need uh, reiterate all the issue sets, so it's square uh, complexity, uh, and then I need somehow to detect what is actually selected in report pages. It's not easy, and it is not a complete solution in this uh, second red square, because I assume that it will be yearly filter. So, and th this this filter is to implement to filter all those uh, uh, issues which have the same year as, as current uh, issue in the report rows. So uh, it's uh, complex, it's inefficient, it's incomplete. Uh, 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 we can uh, rewrite it in five lines uh, with a visible rows set. Uh, uh, I don't have any comments, what can I... <laughs> <laughs> else explain about this formula. So I, it looks even evident for me. Well, one more th last thing. Uh, this uh, function set, which I didn't mention, has also one very useful current, uh, sorry, constant value. So if you know that uh, there will be s the same value calculated for all uh, cells in the report, uh, you can put it in the constant value, it will be calculated once. So uh, it is a huge, huge uh, improvement in performance. So my report now with my visible rows works also on, on monthly level, so it seems looking fine. I didn't count the dots be below or above line, so it still uh, seems fine. So. That's what we can do now with this borough set. You are welcome to try it out. Thank you. <laughs>